Hey guys, I'm finally back with part six of the Gallery Models 1200 scale Battleship Yamato build. In this one, I get the aircraft section of the forecastle deck put together. I show you how I prepare the parts, remove the photo etch, glue the photo etch, remove photo etch, make small hose reels, and I get it painted. Let's get started. guys there are three main parts to the main deck and the anatomy of the ship it refers to this whole area as the forecastle deck there's the main part with the, it's the uh, the wooden surface the aircraft deck and the anchor deck we're gonna be starting with the aircraft deck the first thing to do flip it over and drill out all of those marked holes Once that's done, clean up the part, and then you're ready to move on. Okay, here I'm cutting out the rails that carried the overhead crane uh, that carried boats in and out of the boat hangar. Clean them up with the hobby knife and the sanding stick. There's a long locator tab uh, that's on the deck part, and I'm just gluing it down with some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. All right, here's the photo etch that's going on the aircraft deck. And as you can see, I'm cutting this out on top of a piece of glass. It's best to hold, have something that's smooth and hard to cut against when you're working with photo etch and also have a sharp blade. This photo etch came with a protective film that was on the front and back side. I've obviously removed it from the front, but I left it on the back thinking it would be easier to keep parts from getting shot off into the nether realm while cutting it out. Um, but it, as you'll see here in a minute, it proved to be more of a hassle than it was worth. Just using the back of the blade here to gently lift it off of that film. As you can see, I'm struggling with this one a little bit. Like I said, it was more trouble than it was worth. All right, so for these larger pieces, I'm turning them over and using a sanding stick to score up the back of this, um, that part, that's gonna help the CA glue bond stronger to the part. All right, cutting out some more of the photo etch parts uh, for the aircraft deck. And as you're about to see here in just a second, um, that carrier film, well, that protective film in the back is um, really was causing a problem here. And as you can see right here, I bent the part just ever so slightly. Now I was able to get this one to um, lay flat again, but it was definitely a close call. So after this, I went ahead and removed that protective film from all of the photo etch frets. All right, now we're gonna glue on those larger pieces. That's a tea light that I've removed the wick from, and that's some Flexi 5K CA Black. I like to use black CA. It helps me see where I'm putting it. It's not gonna matter so much on this particular uh, part that we're about to put on, but when you're doing precision um, gluing with precision, precise amounts of glue, this is helpful. And this is some Flexi 5K Extra Thin. Um, 
Back to that tea light. I found that the CA stays fresher longer when it's sitting on wax like this. Just a technique that I use. So as you can see, I'm just going straight out of the bottle on this large piece. And here I'm gonna take a glue looper and I'm just gonna spread that around the back a little bit. It's not complete coverage because if I get the placement wrong and I need to remove it, it's gonna be easier to do it with a little bit of CA glue rather than coating the whole back of it right now. Using tweezers to help pick it up so I don't get it on my fingers. And as you see right here, I'm going to just place one edge of it, just one end of it in place and use that as kind of a, like a pivot point to get the rest of it uh, in the right position. So that end is down. And while I'm holding it off the surface, I'm getting it into place. Now I'm gonna use a glue looper with a small loop and that extra thin CA glue and I'm going along the edge and I'm finishing uh, the gluing process. I'm working in small sections too. So you see I just put in some CA in that spot. I'm gonna use the back of my tweezers and not my fingers. And this is uh, some CA accelerator, also known as kicker. This causes the CA glue to dry and cure instantly. This is highly recommended if you're working with CA glue uh, to help speed up your workflow. And the other thing that you're gonna really wanna have is this right here. This is some debonder. Um, this is gonna clean up any excess glue that you get on top of the part that doesn't need to be there or some that you know kinda oozed out the side. And as you see here, I just put a tiny bit on a cotton bud doesn't take much. It's gonna clean that CA glue right up. If you drip this on your uh, hobby mat, by the way, it will start to dissolve the mat. So be careful uh, you don't spill it. I'm just going along the edge here, cleaning up some of that that's uh, oozed out the side. You can see that black on the, uh, and the black CA there on the cotton bud. This will discolor the plastic so, but don't be alarmed, the surface detail will still be there. It'll just be discolored. And then once you prime and paint it, you'll never know. All right, moving on to some more photo etch. These are the rails that make up the tracks that were used to move aircraft around on the aircraft deck. I got one cut out to the side there. You can see they come in uh, flat and again, cutting on that piece of glass with a sharp blade. And you see I'm keeping a finger on the part too. This one wouldn't spring off into oblivion because of its size, but it's just a good habit to keep a finger on the part so that once you cut that last connection point, it doesn't disappear. All right, so now that it's cut out, I'm gonna use a photo etch bending tool, um, the long side because of uh, this particular type of uh, part. So this side is the detailed part that I want to see. So I'm flipping it over to the non-detailed side and I'm gonna fold these two halves together. Carefully placing it perfectly in half under the vise. And then tightening it down into place. And I'm gonna take that razor blade there, get my hand out of the way, and I'm gonna slide it underneath, first at a 45, and then all the way to the 90. Carefully remove the part, Not careful not to bend it. We'll get this tool out of the way and I'll zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, in hindsight, I should have just went ahead and used my um, photo etch tweezers for this, but I'm just using my regular tweezers right here 
um, bending it the rest of the way so that the two halves come together. Um, but because of the narrow tweezer that I'm using, I'm actually causing it to bend. Uh, I'm getting a slight curve in it, I mean. So that's why I said I should have just went ahead and used my photo etch uh, tweezers for this, which are right here. They're just long, flat tweezers. That, and by using this, I'm going to completely compress the two halves together and straighten out that PE part. Still had a little bit of a, a bend in it, so I'm making some adjustments here. All right, here I'm adding some thin CA glue with a small glue looper to the recessed areas for some of the larger photo edge parts. And then with uh, the tweezers, I'm carefully positioning it and breaking my rule of not putting my finger on it. So, yeah, use the back side of the tweezers instead. All right, so this is how the tracks go on. So I'm using a glue looper with a medium loop and I'm applying that black CA glue. And as you can see, that's why I like to use the black CA glue is so I can see exactly where and how much I'm applying. I'm getting that first uh, connection point uh, placed and I'm checking that the other connection points align up with their respective channels, adding a little bit of that accelerator letting it set up real quick and then um, going on to the next spot where I'm just going to push the track out of the way and then apply some of that black CA to the next uh, connection point and then with the tweezers lift up slightly set it down into that groove hold it there and then um, hit it with the kicker and I just continue that process until the whole track is in place. All right, once the both tracks are in place, then I'm taking this small loop and I'm getting some of that extra thin CA glue. And you're gonna see me apply it right along the top of the track. This is gonna fill in any of the gaps that I have there along that track. And it's also gonna serve as strengthening that photo edge part. Then with the tweezers, if there are any areas that look like they need to be pinched together, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, squeeze those together. And then we'll get the accelerator and apply that as well. And then this track section is all done and ready to go. All right, I wanted to show this part uh, because I didn't film any of the other uh, track photo etch, but you can see that there's a curve 
that is in this part right here. There's a lot of curves in the aircraft hangar deck I did in the uh, ship's hull video. But right now I've got the first uh, attachment point done, and I haven't bent this part at all. I'm just going to apply the CA glue in the next contact point, and then with my tweezers I'm just going to move that part over so that it lines up properly in that space that I've just glued. I'll secure it with the accelerator. And as you can see, it leaves a natural bend in that track. And it's that simple. There's, there's no pre-bending going on here with these uh, track sections. All right, this is what it looks like with all of the tracks in place and those turnstiles in place. And now I've gone ahead and I've cut out and cleaned up the ammo boxes and placed them on the deck. And I'm gluing them now with uh, Tamiya Extra Thin. This is gonna save some time in painting later than having these already in place. And they're not so big that they're gonna interfere with the painting that's coming up later on. All right, what I'm doing now is cutting out the support structures that go underneath the aircraft deck that um, overhang uh, some of the space on the sides. And what I'm doing is I'm cl clipping these off of the sprue and leaving the identification tag in place so that I know exactly what part these are. There's several of these that go on both sides of the hull. So I'm carefully clipping them off, cleaning it up, and as you can see, there's some ejection uh, pins that need to be removed here as well. So not difficult, just a little time consuming with all of the, uh, the cleanup that's needed on each of these parts and the, and the number of parts that there are to deal with. But I'll just leave that identification tag on each one. Um, this is I'm inventorying them now, making sure I have all the um, parts and I'm keeping in these little containers. And then I'll put them on a popsicle stick with some uh, poster tack later. All right guys, it's worth noting, if you're building this kit or you plan to start building this kit, um, when you get to step 34, it has you get part M2 and M3 and join them with these PE parts respectively. So PE part F21 goes with M2, PEF8 goes with M3, and then they go um, on either side of the aft part of the aircraft deck. However, um, when I was fitting these on, let's see, um, M3, this one goes right here. So when you put this on, the plastic lines up exactly right. If I can get that. Okay, yeah, so the plastic fits here, but you can see there's a small gap right here. So when I take the other part and I put it in place, the plastic doesn't fit properly. However, it is the correct PE part. So if you're building this kit, 
they've got this swapped. So F21 should go with M3 and F8 should go with M2. So I've already super glued these in place, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you how I fix this. So what you're gonna need is some some uncure, some uh, this is Bob Smith Industries uh, just debonder, and work with, over a paper towel. This will chew up your um, um, mat. So start this process. It's actually pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna try starting off with a cotton bud, Q-tip, whatever, whatever you prefer to call these. Um, if not, then I'll just pour it in direct. So anyway, I'm just going to go along the, uh, the area where it's glued in place. And just get it kind of just soaking wet. Like this. This is going to cause the super glue to loosen its bond and then you'll be able to get it off. That sit a minute. The tweezers. Okay. And be careful not to bend the PE. We just want to start to just lift it. There we go. Once you get it started, come in with a little bit more of that debonder. There we go. Just like that. Now that's going to go with that part. <laughs> And that's going to go with this part. So that's how you do that. Uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is just wipe this out and um, clean off any excess super glue. All right, now I'm going to build the hose reels. Um, there are several that need to be built. I'm going ahead and, and building all of them up, even though I think I only needed. Um, one of two different types uh, for this deck section that I'm currently working on. But as you can see, I'm taking the plastic parts and I already got the PE parts cut out and in that little tray. And I'm using poster tack to stand the, uh, the reels upright. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of that extra thin CA glue, which you'll see here in a minute, and I'll position the, the, the side um, the round side pieces. So there's actually uh, a lip that this uh, photo etch part is, sits on. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that extra thin CA glue here. And then I have this uh, wax pencil to show that you can use these little wax pencils to easily pick up your photo etch and then once it makes contact with that glue it kind of pulls it off the wax pencil and you can use that or you can use the tweezers uh, personally for these I found that the tweezers were a little easier than the, the wax pencil but just so you know that um, wax pencils are a pretty useful tool when dealing with small photo etch parts All right, once they're all in place, I'm using that accelerator to um, quicken the dry time on these, and then we'll flip them over and we'll repeat the process on the other side. All right, once they're done, they look like this. So for now, I'm gonna put three of them back in the tray so they don't roll away. And the other one we're gonna put on the poster tack like this, and we're gonna get ready to um, scratch build some of the hose that's gonna go around the, the reel. 
So I've got this 28 gauge wire that I'm going to use. It uh, looks like it's a, the right scale for um, this, this application here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure out about 25 inches of this wire. And So the wire's got this natural curl to it from being on the reel for so long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some reverse tweezers and clamp it on one end, and then use that as a weight so that I can pull that wire taut and then use a lighter to anneal it. By annealing the wire, I'm able to um, make the wire more flexible and I can straighten it out a lot easier and it'll wrap around the, um, the reel much easier than it would if had I not done this process. Here's a better view of annealing that metal. You see it gets glowing red hot and then it cools off very quickly. And once it's still warm, you pull it tight and then it, yeah, you can see it's cool to the touch already. The lighter is very hot though. <laughs> now I'm gonna attach the wire to the spool using a little bit of CA glue. I'm just gonna place the wire down, uh, get it secure. This is a slow process because I'm being very careful not to bend or break off the side pieces, but I'm making sure that the wire is tight and neatly wound around the reel. All right, that's what it looks like afterwards. I think it brings a lot more visual interest. All right, so this other photo etch part is the base with a cradle for this um, hose line. This is just a very, very delicate piece of PE, so I'm just using my regular tweezers here. But if this was like a solid piece of photo etch, then I would be using the uh, bending pliers to make sure that I get solid 90 degree bend. And just placing that spool into the cradle and securing it on each end with some CA glue. All right, now on to painting. I'm first priming the aircraft deck with my favorite primer, Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Black. And I'm starting on the underside. And I've already test sprayed this on a separate piece of uh, plastic card, but I always like to start in an area that's not gonna be so visible in case I have some unforeseen um, problems with the paint that need adjustments. Now starting the priming the upper surface, I'm just going back and forth in nice even um, coats. And as you'll see, I'll spin this around as I go to make sure I hit every spot.
All right, these are the support structures that go underneath the aircraft deck on the side of the hull. There's quite a few of these actually. I'm only showing one stick of these, uh, but really there's um, another one that's full like this and then two more that are only half full. But you'll see all that when I go to install it later. And then priming up the rest of the little smaller pieces that are gonna go on um, after the painting's done. Alright, now that the priming is done, I'm going to start the painting. Um, these are the non-slip walkways. I'm painting that with the Imperial Japanese Navy linoleum red-brown. And I've got the sides mark, uh, masked off. I did get a little overspray uh, with this, but it's uh, really not a big deal. But just going in with um, several thin uh, light coats of paint and building up the opacity so I don't um, get the paint pooled and, and running or, or getting underneath the masking. So once those were painted, I masked them off and then also masked off some areas where there's white uh, tabs that were painted along the edge of the deck that the crew members would use uh, for reference uh, at night. These were added uh, in 1944. And again, starting with the underside with the main color, this is the Cure Arsenal Gray. Just making sure that it's spraying properly, and which it is. And so I'll just paint up the areas that will be visible on the underside before moving to the upper surface. As you can see, I got the white markings that I had sprayed uh, masked off, and now I'm going in with um, even uh, thin layers and building up the opacity.
Alright, and one of my favorite parts is the reveal after removing the masking tape. The diff most difficult part of this was trying to get the tape up uh, out from underneath the tracks. Also being very careful not to scratch the paint. That's going to do it for this one. I will have this weathered and ready to install on the hull in the next video. If you like it, do me a favor and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.